What's going on, Talking for the Walk Universe? It's your boy, Cool Breeze, Justin Christie, here with another episode of the Talk Before the Walk. We're talking about Jonathan Ivey's Cage Fighting Championship 10. It's happening Saturday, June 26th at the Appleton Harley-Davidson Center in Clarksville, Tennessee. You don't want to miss it, guys. It's going to be awesome. You can get your tickets at cfcfight.com. And tonight, we're going to be talking about the vacant CFC Middleweight Championship title and the two contenders who are going to be fighting for that title Cladu Manu who will be returning to our show again after his uh his victory over uh Ryan Driscoll uh back at the last CFC and then his opponent Riley Hanner and this is a very interesting story because Riley Hanner uh is making his name in the CFC in the heavyweight division now you fight fans can do the math heavyweight to middleweight that's one hell of a weight cut He's dropping down two weight classes, uh, light heavyweight all the way down to uh, middleweight to make this fight. That's very impressive. And we already know that uh, uh, Claudu Manu drops down from you know walking around weight at 215 to get down to uh, 185. So this is going to be an interesting battle of two titans uh, at a very low weight for them. Uh, so you're going to see the absolute best version of both of them possible. I can't wait to see how this matchup comes to, comes to play, but we have a really cool interview happening tonight. We're going to be talking to these two contenders to see what their preparations have been leading up to this event. And uh, we're going to hear, especially I'm going to hear from Claudio Manu on his last fight as well, because that resulted in a uh, an injury, I believe, that that required some surgery as well from his opponent so we're going to talk to him and, and find out about that but first let's welcome to uh the talk before the walk for the first time mr riley hanner riley welcome to the talk before the walk brother how you doing good man how about you thank you man i'm happier than a hot hog and a cool puddle of mud i'm just excited to talk to you guys uh especially you man i i, I want to talk about um you've got a hell of a weight loss journey Go, you know, leading up to this fight, you uh, you made your name in the CFC divisions and the heavyweight division. Uh, what was what was that experience like fighting as a heavyweight and now knowing that you're moving down to middleweight? Uh, well, tell me a little bit about that journey, man. Man, I'm gonna say this: these heavyweights are big and they hit hard. <laughs> like, I, fight fighting heavyweight was probably the the most hard I've ever been hit in my life. But getting down to where I am now, it's surreal almost i i didn't think i'd be able to ever get down to where i am right now i think i was about two i was around 225 when i actually started this camp i'm around 181 right now so it's what a, was the yeah. what was the heaviest you fought at the heaviest was actually at the heaviest at the time was about 220 and that was when i fought sage okay what was that fight like that fight was, I, it was, it was, it's hard to explain because it was my first fight. I was nervous, but I was also really excited. I, I felt I was that it was just, I was honestly just happy to be in that cage and just be there because that, that fight was, that fight is honestly what I needed to get to take that bigger step into there because without that fight, I don't think I'd ever would have fought. So it was, it was what I needed for sure. What was your motivating factor to step into the cage for the first time? Uh, honestly, it was it was the people I was training with at the time because I was, believe it or not, I was training at a martial arts club at the at MTSU at the time, and they were telling me to do it and encouraged me to do it. I just I just said screw it and I did it. <laughs> that that's always a. <laughs> That always seems to be the case. You know, there, there's more uh, more things that happen just with the end up w w with the uh, phrase "screw it" at the beginning of it. Beginning of it. Uh, beginning of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, for those who uh, who don't know who you are, uh, who are unfamiliar with with you know your history, tell us a little bit about yourself. A little bit about your background. What what got you started in martial arts, and and you know what gyms you're training at, and and tell me a little bit about that. So what got me started was around when I was like five or six, I was watching a lot of the old pride and UFC and strike force events with my dad. That's what really got me going. But then once I got into high school and I started playing football and I started wrestling, that's what really got my love for it. 
And so my sophomore year, I found a gym up in California where I was living at the time. I was training at the San Diego, San Diego Fight Club. And that's where I started doing jiu-jitsu. I started getting all my striking up. And, and after that, I just kind of got hooked. I found the love for it. And after I graduated high school, I started training at I started training at MTSU because they had a club. But now, after that, I'm now I'm training at the UFC gym in Murfreesboro and getting all my getting everything I need sorted. Nice. So, uh, w- when did you move to Tennessee? I moved here about 2017. Okay. I moved here just right after my my junior year of high school ended. What uh what brought you to Tennessee specifically? Uh honestly it was my uncle had just moved out here and he was telling my parents how much they liked it. And so we just we we just decided to pack up and move. It was also it was a better decision financially as well. Okay. So uh, have you know like there's obviously differences between the two states. What what have you noticed uh, difference wise like in, in, in culture and, and everything like that from California to Tennessee? Uh, I've noticed people out here in Tennessee are a lot nicer than the people out here in California. It's also just a little more welcoming out here than it is there in California. Your people just kind of look at you and like, OK, I don't care who you are. You can leave. But out here, people actually want to talk to you. People actually want to get to know you, and it's real. It's actually really nice. I enjoy it out here. Awesome. That seems like a really good contrast. Now, training wise, what what's kind of the difference there? Like, did you find you had better training in California, or do you find a better training here in Tennessee? Uh, I found it better training out here because it's more of out in California. I kind of was getting thrown to the wolves. Like, I was training with. They had me sparring with pro level fighters the first day I got there just because I I was another body for them to use just because they're like, Oh, you're a wrestler, you're tough, you could you could take the punishment. <laughs> but out here it's more of like, okay, we're actually gonna figure out what you need and then we're gonna show you first and then you can try to implement it in your sparring. Outstanding. So tell me a little bit about your gym that you're training at now. So you like I like to train there. I train at the UFC gym, Murfreesboro. That's current. It's honestly probably one of the better gyms I've trained at. It was a uh, there. It's just more of a what I look for is more welcome, like family type vibe. Like we all stick together. We have we have a good competition team here. Uh, they just they help me get ready for what I need, and I help them get ready for what they need as well. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about this uh, this fight you have coming up. How how did that uh come together uh for you guys to fight for the title i know the title's been vacant but uh how was that match made between you and cladu so after after i fought sage i went into i went and fought at another organization i fought uh in uh in hr mma in, up in bowling green kentucky i fought there twice at light heavyweight and then after my latest fight I hit I hit Ivy up after I saw CFC nine and was like, Hey Ivy, I would I want to fight. Uh, I'm ready to fight whenever 185, 205, and that's when that's kind of how this all came to be. Uh, what what was your reaction when uh, you found out you were going to be fighting for the middleweight title? It, it was a lot of a uh, a lot of emotions. It's it was shock and kind of and happiness at the same time. In reality, who doesn't want to fight for a title? But I, I felt like, okay, I would have to at least have two or three fights in the CFC before I, I fought for the title. But mainly, Ivy saw something in me. Everyone else sees something in me that wants me to fight for a title. So I took the opportunity as soon as I got it. So I know you've uh, you, you've probably watched a uh, video of Clodu fighting. I'm hoping you watched the last one of him fighting. Uh, we, we know that he ended up uh, breaking his opponent's leg in that fight. What do you feel about your opponent? What do you know about him? And how are you preparing for, for that type of fighter? So I was actually at CFC nine when he de- debuted. So I saw, I got to see his fight in person and he's, 
he's a big dude. He's a strong dude. He's 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 good. But how I've been training is I I'm just gonna I'm gonna stay off the cage. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna stay in the middle. Try to do as best I can to stay off that cage where that big man's gonna try to hurt me. But in the end, man, a, a fight's a fight. Everyone's got a plan until until they get hit at least once. As Mike Tyson says, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> Mike Tyson. He's got a lot of really interesting quotes for sure. Um, so you uh, you're you're gonna be fighting against Claudio on on June 26. What are you doing to uh, to prepare for him in the gym? Anything you know specific that, that you're doing? Any like any different looks that you're taking? Bringing in different fighters to spar with? So I've been so what I've been doing is I've just been pushing my cardio a lot more so I so I can last those three rounds, those three hard rounds because I know this fight's gonna be a, this fight's gonna be hard. I I knew that the second I, I the second I saw it. I Is somebody hitting a speed bag in there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can, we can hear that repetition. <laughs> yeah. but, so the I've been training is just staying off the cage, working my takedown defense, making sure my head movement's there, keep my cardio up. But I that man is just I'm just preparing for a fight, preparing for a war. Right on, right on. Well, Brother, uh, before I uh, I get to your opponent, do you have any friends, family, sponsors, teammates you want to give a shout out to before? Yeah. So first and foremost, I want to thank my parents, my mom and dad. They, without them, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to actually get this weight cut done. And my teammates as well. I want to thank my coaches. And that's about it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's pretty awesome, man. So hang tight. We're going to get you back up here for a virtual face-off after I get uh, Cladu's interview. I'm really surprised how much I say his name and how many th how many things rhyme with his name. It's insane. All right. Uh, well, uh, hang tight for a minute. We're going to get him up here, and uh, we'll get you we'll get you guys talking in just a second. So I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. You heard it right there from Riley Hanner, cutting all the way down from uh, you know fighting in the heavyweight division. Uh, took a couple of fights at, at light heavyweight for another promotion as well. And uh, now he's going to be trying his hand in, in the middleweight division. And uh, Jonathan Ivey sees something special in him. So he's going to be fighting for that middleweight title. And man, that is going to be something awesome. You're not going to want to miss it right there. Um, real quick, want to give a, a couple of shout outs to uh, some sponsors. We're going to talk about uh, some of these sponsors for the talk for the walk. The Firm Sports Management Group for all your sports management needs and, and fighter management needs. Contact the Firm Sports Management Group. They'll be able to take care of you. Uh, we got Gangsters of Glass out of Lawton, Oklahoma for all your uh, smoking paraphernalia and all kinds of, of, of different uh, items and stuff that you need. They got stash jars. They got all kinds of stuff. Uh, Southern Lawn Care and more out of Oklahoma City uh, for all your lawn care needs. You've got uh, you know, you're mowing, you're trimming, you're, you know, if you need, you know, trees trimmed, bushes trimmed, whatever you need done, uh, they can help you out with your landscaping needs. So Southern Lawn Care and more, check them out. We have Spartan Fit MMA out of Springtown, Texas. Uh, go check out Chris Vereen's jujitsu class out there in, in Spartan Fit MMA in Springtown, Texas. Absolutely top class gym to go train out there as well. Empower Nutrition out of Oklahoma City, uh, up near uh, the Penn Square Mall off of Northwest 50th and uh, Northwest Expressway, that area. Go check out Empower Nutrition for all the best shakes, teas, and Herbalife supplements you can get. For Jonathan Ivis Cage Fighting Championships, they are brought to you by Blue Cord Realty. Uh, for all your realty needs, go check out Blue Cord Realty. They can help you out finding, uh, finding you your next home. Uh, for Jonathan Ivy Skates Fighting Championships brought to you by Harris Holt Combat Sports. They can train in Muay Thai, Judo, wrestling, boxing, jujitsu, and MMA. One of the top class training facilities for mixed martial arts in the Tennessee, Middle Tennessee area. Also, shout out to Love Blood Inc. Custom Tattoo. If you guys want some of the best tattoo artwork around go check out love blood ink custom tattoo they can hook you up and find that art piece that you want to put on your body and be happy with for life so thank you guys for that we really appreciate all your support for not just the talk for the walk but also for supporting your local mma uh that's what we're all about is supporting your local fighters and and your fight promotions and things like that so thank you so much for all of that now 
and I, I said this last time, I can't, I, I couldn't help myself. I have to say it again this time. Without further ado, please welcome back to the show, Cladu Manu, for an interview. Hi, Cladu. How are you doing, brother? Can hey, you hear me? How's it going, Justin? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you just fine. Uh, I'm liking that hat and shirt. What, what, what do you got on there? Yeah. All right. I think I had a little problems with my uh, headphones for a second. Can you hear me pretty well still? I can hear you as well. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Awesome. I was, I was telling you, I like the, that hat and shirt. What do you got on those? Thank you. Um, this is a Daytona Bike Week shirt. Okay. Davidson shirt. And uh, this is a black sheep hat. Okay. Right on. There you go. You black sheep of the family. Is that what's happening there? A little bit. A little bit. It's actually <laughs> my friend's, uh, I believe, salon. Okay. Well, or, shout out to their salon. Where are they located? Uh, Panama City Beach. There you go. Shout out to your friend Salon. Hopefully they can get a a, a few uh, hits off of their businesses from the show. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I'd love that. We we love to kind of support our friends and if they especially if they have businesses, man. I always try to go pay full price and then some for for my friends' businesses because if I'm going to get upcharged by uh you know bigger corporations, I can definitely support my friend with a little bit more. So right. definitely want to support our local people because um, you never know they may be the next big thing. And if you were able to help them from the beginning, you know that's something to be proud of. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about you for a minute, man. You're uh, you're fresh off of a, a, a devastating victory uh, from CFC Nine, man. Uh, you, when when they tell tell you out there to go, you know, have some good luck, go break a leg. You took that seriously, didn't you? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> tell tell me a little bit about your last fight. I want to hear from hear about it from your perspective, start to finish. So, um, you know, I took the fight. I knew Ryan uh, definitely had some experience. He's had a lot of fights, like 20 fights before me. Um, and the fight started started pretty decent. I was, again, the bigger guy because of the weight cut I make. By the time I come back in the cage, I'm really heavy. You know what I mean? Uh, heavier than light heavyweight when I come back. You know, like I could fight at heavyweight at that point. Anywhere from like 215 to 220 by the time I step back in the cage. So um, I was definitely a lot bigger. I took him down off the cage. Um Passed his guard a little bit, threw some ground and pound, and then um, I think he went for an arm bar. I pulled my arm out, and then I let him stand back up. Uh, after he stood back up, we exchanged just a couple of blows standing up. We went back on the cage, and then when I went for the takedown, um, I kind of like grabbed his knee and drove with my shoulder, and he tried to step out with it, and it just buckled his knee. It tore his uh, ACL, and I think mm. his and his patella tendon it just blew his knee out and and as soon as i heard the snap and him you know he kind of like screamed in pain i i knew it was his knee was it was done for wow that is i mean it's a very impressive victory but you know very unfortunate for ryan uh so you know i just want to put it out there you know put out some positive energy and positive vibes towards ryan we're praying for you brother yeah. i hope you get well soon and uh we hope to see you back in the cage man yeah, he just got surgery, so he's he's uh, actually doing physical therapy for it and getting it together. So we should see him back soon for sure. Yeah, it's definitely some of the uh, the more unfortunate things that happen in this sport. But I mean, this this isn't a, a an easy sport for a reason. Just like this, I mean, it, it's it's a man's world. You know, women are in there doing it too. But you know what Anything I mean. Anything can happen. You know? Yeah, it, it's the toughest of the tough. Um, and I mean, w like I said, we we hope him. You know, that he has a speedy recovery and, and is able to get back in that cage. You know, before too long and and without any issues. So uh, prayers up for for Ryan Driscoll and and you know our our love and support for him as well. So. Anyway, let's talk about uh, what have you been doing since that last fight? What, man, how's your training been going? Same thing, man. Uh, just training. Um, I got a couple of new coaches that I'm working with as well, um, just to kind of get a little bit different look. Um, I work with a Muay Thai coach, DJ Miller, out of uh, Sithi Law Muay Thai. Um, I'm also working at the academy a lot with uh, Jason Matherly and Langston Stevenson. Um, it's the gym where Jaime trains out of. Okay. Um, What's it like training with Jaime? Or do you train with him? I do. Uh, so I, I've trained with Jaime in the past, even before, um, you know, I started going to that gym as well. But the man's a machine, dude. He's a machine. He just goes and goes and goes and goes. Obviously, we have a huge weight difference. So, you know, that I have an advantage on that, but – his 
just he's a machine. He just doesn't stop. His pace is insane. Wow. Uh, so I, I'm taking it you're you're uh, you're going to call him as the winner for his fight against uh, George Pirat. Yeah. <laughs> I it, don't get me wrong. I like George. I like George. Um, I think he he did great. His last fight, he looked good, but um, Jaime's just got this pace, man. That I don't. Know. And he's beat a lot of Jaime's beat a lot of my teammates as well. I mean, um, if you look back, he's been the felt de defending his belt for a minute, man, against some tough guys. You know? I think he's starting to be one, of, if if not already, the longest reigning CFC champion that you know that they've had. Yeah, he he's he's phenomenal. I mean, undefeated in the CFC, I believe. Yeah. So that, that's something else. But uh, l let's get back to talking about uh, your fight against uh, Riley. Uh, you know, you, you're still kind of young in your, your middleweight career, but, I mean, the title's vacant. Uh, you two guys are on, on a hot streak for yourselves. Um, you know, how did this matchup come to be with, uh, with you and Riley from your perspective? Um, so I, I believe the way it happened is, you know, after the last fight, I, I told Jonathan, I told Ivy, I said, hey, um, you know, anytime you need me, you know, I'm down to take a fight at the weight class, mm -hmm. at 185. Uh, I'm looking forward to being on most of your shows. You know, any kind of local promotion I, I like to, to be a part of. And he said, okay, man, well, uh, let's go ahead and, and set something up, you know. And I guess he just liked my personality and he, he liked that I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a funny guy, I guess. I don't know. He likes. Well, you are very entertaining. Yeah. So. And so you know, uh, you actually caught the the eye of one of uh, the owners of the firm sports management group. They're they're watching you pretty close. So, yeah. uh, James, he's actually been in the comment section, uh, putting in there. Uh, as soon as you come in, future champ, right here. He's already rooting for you. Shout out to James, though. Shout out to James. That's my guy. He says, uh, he says, we need to link up after this fight. Yeah. So I think he wants to talk to you and potentially get you signed on for, you know, management yeah. for that. So you never know. The Farm Sports Management Group is a uh, a pretty legit company. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah, I've talked to him a couple of times. James James is the man, for sure. Yeah, he travels all over the country, man. He, he's he's pretty amazing. And, I mean, the Firm Sports Management Group is a global uh, management company. They've got fighters in the United Kingdom and in Africa, like all over. You know, they they, uh, they just opened up their market to Mexico. Uh, they got a lot of stuff going on. So, that, that you know, shout out to the firm. But uh, we're, we're going to be talking about this middleweight championship a little bit more because, uh, you know, it, it's really exciting that you and Riley, uh, you cut down from, what, 215? Whenever you're you're training for these fights, yeah, I I sit a little bit heavier normally too, man. Uh, like two twenty five, and then like starting camp, and I'll just wind down. I'll start cutting down to like a good two fifteen, and then the last couple of weeks I cut down that last twenty thirty pounds. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what what's it like, man? Uh, going from that heavy to you know, such a, a, a lighter weight like that? Um, I, I used to wrestle. I started wrestling really young. You know, uh, I started wrestling in, what, sixth grade. So um, I I got used to it, you know, and it's I used to have to do it same day weigh-ins, right? And now I get a whole day. So it's really not that bad, like a couple hours in the sauna, and it's it's off, man. Awesome. I have, I have a lot of pro guys that help me, um, you know, with the water loading and, and cutting correctly, you know, that way okay. I'm not tired or fatigued by the time I come back in. I'm just right. Nice. You guys are both kind of uh, cutting down from, from a good heavyweight, you know, position. You being 215, 220, 225, Riley being in the 220s coming down. Uh, he, he fought at light heavyweight, uh, before and now he's coming into middleweight. Yep. Uh, you know, you, you guys are, are pretty much having a heavyweight fight for the middleweight title, and, and if you guys are able to to you know hydrate up properly. Yeah. So uh, your your previous opponent, I don't think he was nearly that heavy walking around. Like, no, he was like one eighty four. Yeah, not no weight cut. Right. So what what are you doing to prepare for for somebody who's a naturally bigger man? Um, so I've 
actually, you know, I do my research and homework on every fighter that I fight. So I've watched um, all of the tapes on Riley so far. Um, I've even watched some of his wrestling uh, videos that he has out. Um, so he he's a very game opponent. You know, I'm not going to put that past him. Um, I have I have respect for the man 100 percent. You know, uh, I feel like he's very game. He's he's he is young as far as like age wise, I believe. So he still probably has to mature a little bit as far as like physical peak, you know, but he's a very game opponent. I've seen him throw hands pretty well. Um, I watched his last couple of fights for uh, was it B2 MMA and then Hard Rock MMA. Um, so I'm just kind of working all the way around everything. I, I haven't really changed up my game plan um, just because I'm not, you know, I like where my game plan is at the moment. You know, I have uh, a grappling coach. I have a striking coach. I have an MMA coach. I have a strength and conditioning coach. So I have multiple different coaches. So I, I feel pretty confident uh, coming into this fight for sure. Sounds like you got you one hell of a team behind you for sure. Yeah. Uh, you want to give a shout out to uh, to your teammates and friends, family, and sponsors real quick? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I don't have any sponsors. Uh, the the most – my mom and dad. My mom and dad, they sponsor me basically because they help me out through everything, man. Um, so shout out to my mom and dad, Julian and Angela. I appreciate it. Um, I like to give a shout out to a lot of my teammates, everybody from – Sit the law uh, in Nashville or Fight Force Fitness. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to Zach Lozano. Zach, I appreciate you. He helps me with the weight cut every time. Uh, Jaime, Spencer, Langston, everybody at the academy. It's a lot of people. Um, so, you know, I just want to shout out anybody that's helped me train to this doesn't matter where whether it's just go getting a workout in or hitting a run with me i just want to give a shout out to everybody helping me out also uh my buddy uh johnny johnny amons from south florida he's coming all the way from south florida bought a vip table he's been at every one of my fights recording all of it that's my main dude right there wow all right man well i'm gonna bring up uh riley back up to the uh to the screen and i'm gonna get you guys talking a little bit riley welcome back you heard what uh claudu has been having to say oh so, uh, man What's do up? you uh do you have any kind of comments uh to make towards claudio for or claudu from uh from what you've heard no nah, man i respect him just as much it's just i'm i'm just ready to fight i'm getting anxious i can't wait <laughs> so uh I, i'm i'm gonna kind of you know pressure the bear a little bit here uh riley what are you planning like if you could call your shot and and how you could win this fight how do you see this fight going uh if i had to call it i want to say it's going to be a knockout what round do you think round two round two knockout cladu what do you think about that <laughs> Um, I can't hear too. Well. I heard. I heard that part. Uh, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think that's. Um, I mean that. That's nice, but I don't think it'll go like that at all. Um, it's. I think. Ideally, I don't want it to make it past the first round. But if it does, it'll probably end up like a submission by the. I say second or third. If you could call your shot, Cladu, what do you, what kind of submission you think you'd you'd hit? Whatever is given to me, I I'm an opportunist, so I don't uh, have like a certain submission. If you make a mistake and I catch you, I'm, that's it. Doesn't matter what it is. I can, I don't have just like a game game plan A or game plan B. I have like game plan A B C. Whatever avenue you give me to to make it the easiest for me, I'm gonna take it. Riley, what do you got to say about that? Hey, I I respect it. I'm just. Like you said, I don't no set game plans. I'm just I'm ready to go wherever this fight takes me. I'm just I'm ready to fight. How's your uh, submission defense? I, I want to say it's pretty good, but 
like you said, you never know what happens in this game. This sport's unpredictable. That's very true. Very true. Well, gentlemen, uh, Riley, do you have any last words you want to say to Cladu? I want to say thank you, man. I, I appreciate the opportunity, and I respect you a lot for doing this, man. Cladu, do you have any last words for Riley? Yeah, man, nothing but nothing but respect from this end, buddy, and uh, I'm sure we're going to put on the show that everybody's going to enjoy. Hey, man, all right, let's do it. Outstanding. All right, guys, well, we, got, we got one comment here. I, I think it's directed towards Riley. It says, uh, you thought those heavyweights hit hard. Cladu ain't hit you yet. What do you guys <laughs> what do you say about that? Hey, man, you know, like I said, sports unpredictable. You never know how hard someone's going to hit. So I'm excited. All right, fellas. Well, I really appreciate y'all's time. Thank uh, you, guys. For the, uh, the Talk Before the Walk universe and everybody watching along for uh, Jonathan Ivey's Cage Fighting Championships, you can check out these two guys fighting Saturday, June 26th at the Appleton Harley Davidson Center in Clarksville, Tennessee. You can get your tickets at cfcfight.com. The, li the link is in the description. Make sure you click that. Make sure you always support your local fighters. Uh, you know, Hit these guys up. Claudio don't have any sponsors going to a title fight. Come on, local businesses. Where are you at? Support them now. That's what we're talking about. Get behind Riley. He's going into a title fight, too. So, uh, you know, you got your communities there. Hit them up. Tell everybody about it. Let everybody know that you're fighting for a title and for the for the, the sake of your community right there. Get them all behind you. So, uh, you know, Murfreesboro, we got uh, you, you, hell, hit up your friends in California. See if they'll throw, throw up a few dollars for some training costs or something. Put their logos out there, too. So uh, anybody who has a local business out there in Tennessee, get behind these fighters, guys. Go, go check them out, cfcfight.com, Appleton Harley David Center, June 26, CFC 10. Guys, thank you so much for being on my show. I really appreciate y'all. And I'm going to tie this up real quick. So give me a, a bit. Yeah, y'all have a great day, man. You and too. we'll see y'all at weigh in. All right, guys, you heard it right there. We had a virtual face off between Cladu Manu and Riley Hanner. They're going to be fighting for the CFC vacant middleweight championship on June 26th. Like I said it, uh, during the interview, get your tickets at cfcfight.com. You don't want to miss this. This is an action-packed card. Jonathan Ivey always brings the best action to the Middle Tennessee area. He's coming to Clarksville, Tennessee for the first time with this show. Make sure you show up. Make sure you support. Support your local fighters. Support your local fight promotions. This is when it counts right here. When they get up into the big leagues and they start making those big dollars, man, it's too late. They're already skyrocketing. Get on the get on board their ship now. This is when be on it. This is when they know that you've been since day one supporting. So support your local fighters, guys. We love y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Talk Before the Walk. We're going to be back Thursday talking about Rage in the Cage 81. We're going to have uh, Chris Vereen and Tyrone Page on the show to talk about their fight coming up on June 19th. Uh, you don't want to miss the, that interview either. It's going to be pretty fun. Chris Vereen's a good friend of the show. Uh, I think Tyrone Page will be a, his first time on our show, so we'll be happy to have him. Tune in to the Talk Before the Walk Thursday. We're going to have more interviews leading up to CFC 10 as well. And then I believe we're going to have some more for the uh, – we're going to bring on some for the final round championships, tw uh, Fight Night 25. We're going to bring in at least that main event and, and lead up to that show as well. So check it out, guys. A lot of MMA action, a lot of kickboxing action, a lot of fights, boxing, all kinds of stuff. Coming up, check it out, CFC 10, Clarksville, Tennessee, Appleton Harley-Davidson Center. Saturday, June 26th. Don't forget to get your tickets at cfcfight.com. I've been your host, Cool Breeze, Justin Christie, one more time. We will talk to y'all later. Stay cool.